This is Gail Morgan thanking you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint each Thursday at 8 p.m. Channel 17 on Comcast, on YouTube, and on Facebook. Thank you for joining us today. I'm James Just. We've got John Cameron in the middle and Richard Fields at the other end. All right, gentlemen. California's EDD disaster is actually getting worse, if that's possible. Oh, we, <laughs> we've got 1.4 million people who can't get their unemployment benefits. And we were now told last Friday that they've known since the beginning of January that they're not going to get those checks out until sometime in March, maybe. And, and people can't apply. And if they apply, their new application won't be accepted until March, too. Yeah, well, right? I, it's... It's got something to do with the the federal extension that expired for two days. Apparently, that crashed the system, and now they have to co completely rewrite all the code. Well, let's let's just look at this at an uh, existential level. Uh, why in the world would anybody depend upon government to do anything when they are abject failures at doing even the most simple things, like giving away money? Hmm. I yeah, agree. Well, I have I have conversations with people all the time about the the panic demic or you know the 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 fluvid taking over the world. Basically, it's you know an excuse for governments to to re, retrench their their power. And, and I say anybody that's gone through this over the last year has learned two vital lessons: one that you that things that you don't plan on can come up and bite you on the ass, and two. Anybody who thinks that the government should be in charge of more stuff is an idiot. I mean, it's just obvious every single, in every single step, in every single way, the communications on this thing, masks are no good, you need to wear masks, da-da-da, this thing is contacted from, it's just everything, all the government agencies, giving away money, I mean, just the, the, the one of my favorite jokes, I think I might have even wrote it. Uh, a a mouse or an elephant is a mouse uh, built to government specs. They manage to make things huge and expensive and completely, completely inefficient. Well, yeah, first you, you, you made a bunch of people, what, um, non-essential. You've asked them to stay home and said, hey, we'll, it, we'll compensate you to stay home. We'll give you extra unemployment. And then they can't get them the extra unemployment. <laughs> and So even if we agree that you know, government screwed all this up. They made a promise and then they failed to deliver and then they didn't even come public about, okay, here's how we failed. It's they're hiding it and passing the buck. I talked to my own assembly member and they don't know what's going on. They didn't know what was going on until Friday when somebody asked a question, the right question on a phone conference and it says, yeah, we have to rewrite all the code we've known since January. So wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't you, if, if people... Let's say you're you're an employer, and in this case, government is employing all these people to stay at home, basically because they've made their yeah. job, they made it so that they can't get to their job, so they've forced them to be unemployed, and they're paying them to stay home rather than rioting in the streets or or going to their job and getting sick if people get sick, and and then they're if they knew that there was going to be a delay in their paycheck. I mean, I've worked in places where, you know, they delayed the paycheck. Wouldn't you let people know so they could make other plans, you know? Uh, maybe not take that apartment, maybe not buy that electric bike, maybe not buy three, pound, three pounds of pot. I don't know what, but you inform people. They can make, ahead of time, they can make better decisions. So it's just, again, the government, the, the government cares nothing for the voters other than getting them in power and, letting them increase power. That's it. They don't care. Yeah, Anybody who says they care is a liar. I was listening to a hearing, a, a assembly hearing on Thursday, and one of the assembly women, she sat there and said, we've been here since 2012 asking you to fix these things and nothing's gotten done. Well, it's your job to make sure they get stuff done. That's literally why you're there. To what, the oversee assembly? The assembly yeah. People? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they're sitting there blaming the, the bureaucrats. The bureaucrats can only do what you tell them to do and what you give them the money to do. So ultimately, this long-term failure, this is a decades-long failure. This computer system is from the 70s, and you're asking it to interact with modern computer systems, and it failed. It, it was, it was determined, bound to fail at some point, and it simply failed. And rather than say, hey, we've completely screwed this up. Here's how it happened. Here's how we're going to go fix it short term and long term. 
Instead, it says, ah, it's everybody else's fault. Nothing's going to get done. And average people... And give us more money. Yeah, and average people are getting are the ones paying the price, and their families and their support systems who are having to help them eat and pay their rent and pay their bills and make their car payment are suffering. And this is all. This whole thing is a, just a complete disaster. And you get to the point where you don't even know what to say anymore. When I was running for office, the biggest issue that came across was not race issues. It was not issues with. It was, it was none of the issues that we thought. It wasn't COVID. It wasn't the race issues. It was simple transparency. Government transparency. That was the symbol, the, by far the single biggest issue in my campaign that even people who didn't vote for me agreed on. Mm. And so it's, and this is exactly why. It's the, the, we can't get any accountability because no one wants to admit that, hey, you know what? It's my responsibility. Even if I've stopped my fault, it's still my responsibility to fix it. And here's what we're going to do. And our assembly people, our legislatures, our leaders refuse to come out into the public and take a stand and take responsibility for it. And we're all paying the price. And it all begs the question, why should the government have the authority uh, to shut down business? Why should the government have the ability to hand out free money uh, that they've invented by running it off a printing press? You know, wh why do we why do we as citizens give government so much authority and so much power when all they do with it is use it to uh, to manipulate us and and uh, and uh, ride roughshod upon us? Mm. And I, I take it from a different person. I agree with the with your with your thought, but it, it uh, government um, takes the authority from the people. We didn't give it to them; they took it. Uh, and and there's probably 500, maybe a thousand court cases out there saying that they're exercising authority they don't have. I mean, Richard and I work for a uh, a uh, public interest law firm for you know a little while. Richard longer than I, and and there was constantly cases where where these independent regulatory agencies assumed power. They assumed the power of judge, jury, and executioner. The power wasn't granted to them by anybody. They just did it. And, and in spite of a court saying you can't do that or you need to do this, that, or the other thing, they just go ahead and do it. And unfortunately, um, you, there, there's, you, can, you can take power back in two ways. You can do it in the way that I am not suggesting at all, and that's with the, you know, at the point of a gun. Or you can take it back by simply ignoring the government. If everyone or enough people ignores the government and disobeys their unlawful edicts, then they have no power. But if you choose to obey, you know, one person will, you know, you'll be the nail you get hammered down. But if there's a thousand nails sticking up, they can't hammer them all down. And that's, that's what we're going to have to do, unfortunately, because nobody is put into office to create the kind of nightmares that government has done. It's just... Yeah, you're espousing the simple truths that uh, were espoused by Mahatma Gandhi and by uh, Martin Luther King and by uh, Henry David Thoreau and any number of uh, uh, philosophers and activists uh, throughout history. Uh, don't obey, they can't control. But uh, unfortunately, we have uh, a, uh, a populace that is very much whipped, cowed, and brainwashed to obey because of fear. Yeah, well, Edward, Edward Snowden is the perfect example. He exposed government corruption, um, illegal government activity, and he's being the one. He's the one who's being treated as a criminal, rather than the people who engaged in illegal and unconstitutional activity. It's you know it's but, the perfect example. Yeah. And yeah. in the private sector, if you did that, you you would you would go to jail. There'd be there'd be Bingo they'd broke. be aghast if it, if it was a if it was corporate people doing this. Oh, you'd want to put them in prison forever. Shoot them. Write a new law so that you can take all their money away. But if it's government, you know, the idea, when did the servants become the masters in this country? I do not understand. Those people are civil servants. Those people are elected to do the bidding of the people. They are not elected to become emperor. Like, like Newsom, you talked about lack of transparency. I have, I, I talked to a lot of doctors. Uh, you know, pick their brains for my books and just because I like to talk to them and see what they think about the pandemic. And, and to a man and woman, they're saying, I'd really love to see these so-called uh, statistical uh, 
algorithms that uh, Newsom is using to base his decisions on. I'd like to see if they're science-based. I'd like to see how they're calculated. I'd like to see who gave them input into creating these things. I'd like to see, I'd like to see, I'd like to see. Guess what? The, 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 his promise was to be open and transparent, as you said, James, open and transparent governance. But he is keeping the, the, the information that lets people know what he's basing his decisions on. Uh, yeah, because I, I believe they're too, too stupid to understand it. Well, no, yeah. it's because he's making this stuff up. I almost said a bad word. He's just making this crap up. He's pulling it out of his whatever you want to fill in for that word. We'll and we all pulling, know he's doing. We'll talk about pulling more stuff out of the, the hindquarters. Yeah. Um, the California Auditor Report said the state distributed more CARES Act funding to the larger counties. Actually doubled the CARES Act funding to the Perfect. large counties than to the rural counties. Now, you may be. Maybe you can make an argument that some of these larger counties needed a little bit more money per person than the rural counties. I'm actually skeptical of the argument, but maybe, but double. Are we, you know, I think we wonder why the rural people in California are kind of fleeing and why they're feeling so disenfranchised and why there's this big movement to recall Newsom. Well, here's the perfect example is how you're just ignoring the people outside of the city centers. No, I, I yeah, if you look at look into, into the if you look into the, de the details of how the money was distributed, the biggest, uh, one of the biggest, I think, if not the biggest uh, institutional recipients of the money was the public education system, hmm. uh, which just so happens to probably have, other than perhaps the uh, prison unions, have the, 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 the largest union, the largest uh, labor, uh, uh, labor giving support to the Democratic Party. The money is going to the greasy wheel, and the greasy wheel is uh, labor, public education, and the entrenched uh, interests in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. And that's why, uh, and, and they're more entrenched in larger counties than they are in smaller counties. Yeah. Uh, it's smaller a follow-up. Yeah. Smarter, smaller, smarter, smaller counties don't vote for the people who are in power. They vote against the people who are in power. Therefore, the people who voted for them were rewarded, the people who voted against them and continue to do so and disobey their edicts were punished. It's pretty. It's, it's patronage, pure and simple. Yeah, yeah. It's it's the grift. It's kind of. It wasn't a mistake. It wasn't. No, mistake. no. It clearly wasn't a mistake. This is. They've deliberately done this, and yeah. it's. It's why it's you know essentially you know why it's because the people who run the committees are the people who come from those districts, and so they feed their districts, and they feed the people who help them in their districts, which you know happen to be. In you know Sacramento, the Bay Area, LA, it's it's all the teachers unions, the public employees unions, mm -hmm. and you know they pull the strings and so they get the money. It's mm -hmm. you know it's sad, but we've got yet another. The California high speed rail pushed back the construction deadline yet again and asked for another one point. What was it? One point five billion dollars. Cancel that. I thought Newsom canceled that when he came into office. He canceled <laughs> it all but sixteen billion dollars worth. That's for a hundred and twelve miles of rail between the thriving metropolises of Fresno and Madeira. So you'd work those numbers backwards. That is, uh, is that a hundred million dollars a mile? It's insane. It's a hundred million well, we're dollars we're per even mile. Further backwards and, and, and figure out the implied ticket cost uh, over the, you know, over the capital uh, life expenditure of the railroad. It's something that absolutely nobody would uh, would want to spend. Well, and I think I think my brother back when they did the light rail here in in Sacramento figured looked at the numbers and he was an accountant at the time, so he liked playing. He still likes playing with numbers, but now he does things that pay better and more fun. Um, and he said that 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 based upon the number of riders projected and all the rest of that, you could buy every single rider a brand new. Cadillac for less money than they're spending on the rail system. You could just hand them the keys to a brand new Cadillac and it would be less money. And that was over, I think, only a 20 year lifespan. So all of these things are just, uh, they're boondoggles. And um, I don't, you know, we talk about it and talk about it, but I think, you know. Um, well, for some of us, this is the world's biggest, we told you so. 
right? We, yeah. we, it's like everything that we said was going to happen literally is happening. And it's like, yeah, we told you so. What did you guys really expect to happen anything different? You can't get people their dang unemployment checks and you think you can build a high-speed rail? Hmm. <laughs> well, no, but see, the goal isn't to build a high-speed rail. The goal is to get the, is to get the money, get the federal money, to get the state money, to get the tax money, to get the bond money, and and spend that money on political machinations mostly, and then slice off slice after slice after slice and give it to your friends, give it to the construction companies, the construction unions. This is only unionized construction, I'm absolutely sure. It's, it's paying off all their favorites. And then you had all the consultants and all the rest of this. And these people take that money and out of their slice, they give a slice back to the people that gave them their slice. So the, the, the boondoggle was never intended to get people from point A to point B. It was intended to get money from point A to point B. And virtue signal at the same time, in you know, in, in the give a nod to climate change and uh, the green agenda. Uh, well, if you look at if you look at construction costs on con the pollution caused from, and this is what makes me crazy, you know, like like people driving Priuses and I should should I mention one single brand electric cars and feeling great about it when you when you look at the carbon footprint and even saying that leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Uh, you would be better off driving driving one of those uh, scam Volkswagen diesels than driving an electric car. Based upon shipping throughout the globe, based upon getting rid of the batteries, all the rest of that, you look at the construction costs and the the impact on quote unquote global warming from this project. All the machinery, all the disturbance of the land, all the metal, all the shipping, all all of that stuff, and it's going to take. If you do get people off the road, 40 years to touch that. It's, it's crazy. There is, there is no benefit. You, you're, you're saying, right, they gave a nod to Richard, but they certainly don't want to want to do anything about the reality. If they want to do something about the reality, we'd have a nuclear power plant about 10 miles from my house. Well, we used to have a nuclear power plant in the yeah. area, but it was always breaking down. So I yeah. suppose we can't we can't blame them for turning that one well, off. Then, you know, <laughs> if it was if it was run by something other than a a uh, nonprofit public utility, when and Smud was way too small to run a nuclear power plant anyway. I mean, yeah, just, well, I mean, and, and the and the uh, the uh, technology involved in, in nuclear power plants has uh, progressed. Uh, exponentially since mm -hmm. uh, Rancho Seca was, was constructed. Mm -hmm. You can do um, small-scale nuclear power plants that are uh, practically foolproof in terms of safety and uh, that will bring in electricity at a, uh, a, very, uh, a very low cost compared mm -hmm. to, to uh, solar and wind, even though solar and wind are uh, not steady sources of power, whereas mm -hmm. nuclear is. It doesn't yeah, France right. have small the small power nuclear power stations dotted all over the country? Isn't it France or? Well, France gets like I think ninety five percent of their power from nukes. I'm not sure how, what the size of the nukes are. Yeah, yeah I thought I one yeah. of those European countries has a bunch of small the small nuclear power plants, and we've never heard of a single problem from any of them. It's well now they're they're the green power the green party is so strong in Europe they're closing down nuclear power plants in Germany. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think yeah. France. Though. France is is pretty strong too, but the their farmers are very strong as well. But they're, yeah, and and I I like birds. I look at my I'm right now. I'm looking out, and typically I see a hawk. And every time I see a hawk flying, and somebody starts talking about turbine power, I think about the one thousand golden eagles that have been killed at one wind power site in California. One that's one thousand golden eagles have been chopped to bits by but when i talk to my friends in the business they call them bird choppers they don't call them wind turbines uh and they'll never be yes they're a little more efficient than they used to be but you know the horrors they they're doing to the bird population and more importantly the bat population uh which you know all those things are necessary for propagation uh, of plants they're necessary to keep insect population down and everything they're being destroyed by a a green boondoggle all right i'm off my soapbox on that one i apologize yeah. all right well we'll we'll run this thing one last uh, the arts department out of san francisco they've decided to change the name of their arts department because acronyms are apparently now a symbol of white supremacy 
Hmm. I don't understand how the acronym, acronym, now I can't speak. Apparently, big words are a, are a symbolism of, you know, my su- lack of supremacy, but. <laughs> well, I mean, the fact that virtue signaling is, is self-evident. They're changing it. What, what is it? VAPA? Uh, yeah, VAPA. Visual and Performing Arts. To, uh, USF, whatever. They're changing it from one set, one set of initials to another set of initials and claiming that their set of initials is not racist, whereas the original set of initials is racist on some, uh, you know, some, some theory that absolutely has nothing to do with reality. And uh, claiming that there's a, an, a, a difference between initialism and uh, acronym, or yeah, acronym, and, you know, and beyond me, how they can get, how, how they can come up with that nonsense, much less get anybody to believe believe so it. Initialism less, less is getting, different uh, than the an... war to vote in favor of it. Well, th- this there there is this is the school board, and this is marvelous. I I this puts a smile on my face. Uh, the city of San Francisco is sco- is suing. I almost said something else. Suing that very school board for not having a plan to get kids in class. And they said, they used some, for them some pretty harsh terms. They said, uh, yeah, planning to have a plan is not meeting the requirements that we have for you as a school district. So that school district is so crazy that even the city of San Francisco, which kind of defines crazy, uh, finds them crazy. So uh, that, that, nor, that rational people, like the three of us on this show, well, at least two of us, um, find it crazy. It's, it's just, and, and, and to spend time doing that when they haven't figured out a way to get kids in class is just, to me, it's like blasphemy. And, it's and like, what are they doing? Home. Why are we spending time, any time at all, we're VAPA, you know, what, visual and performing arts, it's VAPA, okay. What's how in the heck is that? I, how stupid do you have to think other people are in order for you to think for you to think that that's why? It's, I just these people live in this world of stereotypes and they can't get out of it. Well, so is apparently white education is white supremacist. Um, uh, perfectionism is white supremacist. Uh, individualism, objectivism, in- individualism, all of these things. Yeah. Individualism, standardization, uh, objective testing, um, all of those things are also white supremacists. And, uh, and, the, and the, uh, the liberals sure pick it up. I mean, the, it, wasn't, it was when the, within about minutes of the little the naughtiness at the Capitol um, that, uh, that the white uh, supremacist insurrection went out through the verse, and all of the lib libs were using that as they uh, libtards were using that as their buzzword. But when the BLM folks just demonstrated, shouting out, "Burn it down! Burn it down! Burn it down!" as they went by the Capitol, that's okay. I'm I'm just I don't get it. I don't get it. I guess I must be, you know. Crushed by by my education in a white supremacist world. Take your privilege, John. I'm too privileged. Yeah, yeah. That's what my wife keeps telling me. Yeah. Well, you know, the, we've tried to fight racism with more racism, and we've ended up with more racism. And it's, yeah. for for some of us, it's not a surprise that yeah. we ended up there. I'm it, yeah. I'm I'm about the whole racism thing, and I'll try not to go off because I know we got some other things to 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 cover. Um, there is there is. As Richard pointed out, both sides are peddling fear, but the the people who are are talking about racism and 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 making everyone who is in a particular racial demographic uh, only defined by their race are by the very definition of racism racist. Yet they are calling other people racist. If you say that people are only defined by the color of their skin then you are a racist. Yet that group of people is accusing That's, people you're being, who... You're, you're being way too objective, John. Or that group of people is accusing people who do not define objective people as... Objective and liberal as, interpretation of words is a, it's a, a white uh, supremacist... White supremacist. Uh, right. Well, uh, I'm word. done. I'm done. Me. Yeah, I'm done. Maybe we need to get on to the next one, I think, because we're running out of time. Yeah, yeah we're at it. We'll go... 
the New York top health officials have been rebuffing, um, actually, their government, both de Blasio and uh, Cuomo now, about de Blasio wanted to use the second dose of vaccine as the first dose to get other people, more people their first doses and screw the people who get the second doses, I guess. I don't know. And this is on the heels of Cuomo's having all his health officials, nine of his health officials have bailed on him because of his political interference in the issues. Has the wheels kind of fallen off on the New York issue over there? Where they were used to be the, the shining light, right? <laughs> I, I, have a, I have a radical solution to all of the uh, problem of getting uh, vaccine distributed. Let the people who think they need the vaccine the most, which would probably be the elderly who are also the wealthier because they've had time to amass wealth, and let, you know, let, let the people who want the vaccine the most pay for it and get it. And those who want vaccine less, wait in line until the price comes down. I know that's crass and materialistic and that's uh, quite uh, insensitive and so forth, but it's actually a, a market solution that will get the most vaccine out to the most people, particularly the most people who need it the most in the most uh, in the most uh, time efficient manner. That's mm -hmm. the solution. And, you know, and if you don't understand that, you simply don't understand economics. Mm -hmm. And if you think that being making economic decisions on a political basis is going to benefit anybody other than the politicians themselves and their mm -hmm. favorite, their favorite voter blocks, you're, 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 you're nuts. Mm -hmm. Agree. Yeah, well, the command and control has failed, right? And so if you want to get as many vaccines in the hands of as many people as you can, as quickly as you possible, right? That's the whole point, is to get as many people the vaccine as quickly as possible. Well, then you take off all the restrictions. You take off all the command and control, and you let it out. And instead, they're trying to, oh, well, we got to get it to this group of people first, and that group of people, and then this group of people. And then you're going... And now we it's, we don't even know how many vaccines we have anymore. Well, yeah, what's, what's yeah, and vaccines are going to waste because people yeah. because the bureaucracy simply doesn't work. Never has, never will. I've spoken. <laughs> and that is about the end of we've got today. Oh, so, you can't uh, let me close on that. You got to say something wise. Yeah. No, there's nothing wise for you, John. That's all you get today. Okay. You can you can find us on libertariancounterpoint.com. You can find us on social media. Just search for Libertarian Counterpoint and do us a favor: like, subscribe, share all that good fun stuff that everybody asks you to always do. And from all of us here at Libertarian Counterpoint, please remember to love everybody. And have a good evening. Thank you so much. I shall do all of the above. This is Gail Morgan thanking you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint each Thursday at 8 p.m. Channel 17 on Comcast, on YouTube, and on Facebook. We invite you to come again next week for the Libertarian Counterpoint. Ladies and gentlemen, we also invite you to watch Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts each Monday, 5.30 p.m. on Channel 17. The show also available on YouTube, Facebook, and other social media platforms and podcasts. Thank you for listening to the Libertarian Counterpoint. <laughs>